This video is meant for developers, and it serves as an introduction to creating custom Sitefinity widgets. We'll also examine how to add user-friendly interfaces, known as control designers, to these new widgets. Let's get started. Now, content in Sitefinity is created by dragging and dropping widgets onto a page canvas. Once these widgets are placed, you can click Edit, interact with a user-friendly interface. This is known as a control designer. Configure the content that should be created, hit save, and it ends up on your web page. Now this is designed to be accessible by anyone, including content authors. Now Sitefinity comes with a lot of widgets out of the box, but these widgets are simply based on normal ASP.NET controls, meaning you can create your own ASP.NET controls and then add them to this toolbox. In fact, this is one of the primary ways that Sitefinity is extended to address project requirements that may not be met out of box. Now to do this, I'm going to open up the Sitefinity project in Visual Studio and create a new folder, and we'll just call this folder Widgets. And then inside this folder, just like I would ordinarily do it in any other ASP.NET application, I will create a new web user control, and I'll just call this web user control Hello World. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm going to keep things as simple as possible. So here we have a paragraph, hello, and then an ASP.NET tag, a literal. So very, very simple. Then I'll open up the code behind that's associated with this user control and paste a bit more code in here. So I'm just establishing a public property called name. And then the page load, I'm setting that the value of that name literal that we added to that other page here, name literal, to whatever value string is set to. Now if it's blank, you can see I have world. So in this other tag here, it'll just display hello world and then an exclamation mark. But if we do actually have a value for name, then it'll say hello and then whatever name. So I'll save this. And then I don't want to involve Sitefinity yet. And I'm going to recommend you do the same. So anytime you're creating new controls, it's often nice to test them outside of Sitefinity uh, before you test them within Sitefinity. So I'm going to add a new item here. And this will just be a normal web form page. And I'll just call this test.aspx. So this actually becomes part of my Sitefinity application. I can swing into design mode and then drag and drop this user control that I just created onto the page. I'll move back over into the source mode just so we can see the little tag that it put in. And for now, I'm not going to do anything else. What I'm going to do is build this entire application. Sitefinity is a web application project by default, and we had code, both the code behind for the user control and then also for the test.aspx page, which means I do have to recompile it because of that code. And I see down here, build succeeded. And at that point, I'm just going to right click and hit view in browser. And it displays exactly what I would expect it to display. Let's go one step further here. Let me grab the name, the ID off of this. And then the code behind just to test this, there's the name property. I'll type my name here. Then once again, because I made changes to some code, I have to build it and then I can refresh this page. And it does what we would expect. So now that I've tested this control and I know that it works fine, it's time to involve Sitefinity. So let's visit Sitefinity now. And then I'll visit the administration section and settings and then go to advanced. So I made this user control, but Sitefinity is not yet aware of it. And this is what I'm changing here. So if we scroll down in this list, you'll see here's toolboxes, and then we'll drill down again, and there's page controls, and then there's sections for those page controls. And I guess for our example, I'll just create a brand new section. And I can call it my widgets, I guess. This cannot have spaces. This is a title and it can have it spaces. And then you can put a description if you would like. Uh, for now, I'll just keep this simple and hit save and there we go we have a new section which is right here and then if I drill down into that and then go to tools you can see I can create a new tool for this section it's asking me a control type in our case this is a user control which we put into widgets so I'm just using that tilde which designates the root of the application and then we called this hello world dot ASCX you can just call this hello world um, except that's the name that can't have the space, and this is the name that can have the space, the title, and I can leave all this other stuff alone, and I will hit Save Changes, and then visit the Pages area. And then I'll just use the home page as an example. And if I collapse this section, you'll see here's my My Widgets section down here at the bottom. Here's the Hello Widget 
that I added that I can now drag and drop onto my page. I get the results I would expect and then I will click edit and we'll see what Sitefinity generates by default for my custom widget. So Sitefinity is just using reflection to look at the public properties. Because this is a user control, it automatically inherits some public properties, things like enable theming, enable view state. So you get those just because it's a user control. This is the custom property that I added. If I were to type my name in here, I will get the results I expect. Now here's the problem with this. This interface is not very friendly for content authors who may not understand a lot about the underlying technologies. And we'll now look at how we can apply a nice little user friendly interface to this very simple widget that we've created. So there's three primary pieces involved with creating a control designer for Sitefinity. The first one is a control designer class. So I'll hit new item here. This will be a class and hello designer and then it'll just be .cs and I'll click add and that gets added to my project here and these control designers need to inherit from control designer base. And I'm just going to hit control and period to have it auto suggest some potential classes and you can see that's found in the Telerik Sitefinity web UI control design class and then I can double click this right click it implement abstract class. You see it extracts a couple of methods that I do need to implement to create this control designer. So the first thing I'm going to do is toggle by default into that simple view, the user friendly view instead of the advanced view. Now there's also this layout template name and this will actually be the HTML that gets applied to this control designer. Now these templates can be embedded in the actual assembly and this is if you weren't adding your custom widget and custom control designer to the Sitefinity project like I'm doing here but rather you had a whole new project and a whole new assembly that you were including into Sitefinity you could embed these ASCX files in that assembly but because we're just adding this stuff purely to our, our web application I don't really need to do anything here in fact I'm just going to return string empty. We still do need to tell Sitefinity about a template, but that's a template that we will create just as part of the, the web application. In fact, let's do that now. So I'm going to right click and then create a new item. We'll call this Hello World Designer, except this will be a web user control type, except I really don't need all these code behinds. And so what I'm going to do is remove this and then remove the designer that gets created as well. And then as far as this goes, I can just really even blow away all that XML and then I'll paste in uh, just a little simple HTML, just a div tag, span, your name, and then the input, and that's it. So all this ASCX file contains is really the HTML that will ultimately get applied to that control designer. Now once we have this in place, we need to tell our control designer about this template that we've put on the file system and I'll override and the property that we can use for that is layout template path and then what I think I'll do is move down here and say this is private and this will be layout template path and then I just need to give it a, a path to this ASCX file that we just created so, and then we can utilize that up here so that you could reset it, I suppose, if you wanted to and provide a new template. And then for otherwise, we'll just return this little private variable that we created. So that's that. We have a control designer now and we have some HTML for that control designer. Now we need to attach this control designer to our original control. And to do that, we just need to add a little attribute out here. So it's called control designer type of whatever the type of our designer that we just created there is and so I'll use that control period shortcut again and there it is so control designer and then it points to our control designer which is right here so that's how when Sitefinity loads up that hello world control that we created this tells it where its control designer is which leads it of course here and then it finds its template path here 
which loads in the HTML. So the thing you might be asking at this point is, okay, this is all pretty simplistic, but how, how does the data actually get reset? I mean, where is that all happening? And it's actually happening through HTML. And in fact, one of the first things I did when experimenting with all of this is I would build it and then go into Sitefinity and click edit. In fact, I may even show this. So let's move over to Sitefinity. And now we'll click edit and look what happens. So all those advanced properties are now gone, uh, but you can see there's, there's nothing being displayed here. And that's really because there's JavaScript involved in this as well. Sitefinity does a whole lot of stuff client side. We don't want these full page refreshes and postbacks. Um, so to actually take care of all this stuff you're going to do here, you're using plain HTML with JavaScript to handle a lot of these actions. So to do that, I'm going to right click, add new, it'll be a new item, and this is a JavaScript file, which I will call hello world designer.js. And then I'm going to paste in a whole lot of JavaScript and it'll look intimidating, but I'm going to walk through this because a lot of this is just boilerplate that you'll be able to copy and paste as well. In fact, if you look at our official documentation, you'll find a lot of the same stuff, but let's, let's walk through the, the parts that are unique. First of all, registering the namespace. I mean, this is just the namespace that points to your unique user control. And for mine, you can see I mean, here's where it's getting that Syfinity web app, widgets, hello world, and then you saw the same thing here, or Syfinity web app, widgets, hello world. And then you see those same namespaces reflected over and over again. So for your own unique widget, you may just need to do some sort of search and replace to just quickly reinitialize all those. But there's a few core functions that get called at different stages of this control designers life cycle. So you can see what's being called when it initializes, when it disposes, when the UI is being refreshed. And this handles fetching in the data from, so here's the control data. So this is what we already have associated and stored with the control, control data name. And you know it, where name is coming from because that was something we, we specified over here. This is the public property that we're ultimately using to set the values. And then text name, we saw where that came from as well. If we go to the ASCX file associated with the controlled or the Hello World Designer, you can see there's text name. So this is just handling, uh, setting that data from there. And then we see another function called when the actual changes get applied, meaning someone hits the save button. And we're just doing the reverse of this operation here where we're resetting the control data based on whatever new value was put in that text name. And like I said, everything else, boilerplate. You'll need a lot of these same things where you'll end up often making customizations is right in here to get the data out of Sitefinity and set up your, your UI according to whatever's previously been saved. And then the reverse of that, taking whatever uh, the user had done inside the actual interface and making sure to persist it out to the control data. So this is in place now, and the only thing that remains to be done is to tell the control designer itself um, about this little bit of JavaScript. We have to load this in here. And to do that, I'm going to cheat and paste just a little block of code. See, we get some errors once again. Control period to fetch in those namespaces. And then we're missing a little variable here that I just need to add a private private string, private string, and then call it script reference. And we put this in. And now that little variable exists. So that should be everything that's involved. We did make some more code changes, so we need to rebuild. And now once this succeeds, let's check it in Sitefinity. So here we are, and if I click edit, here's my nice little friendly interface that I could just remove my last name here just as a test and hit save. We see that that gets reflected. So there were four pieces to making this work. There was the actual user control that contained the functionality that we ultimately wanted added to Sitefinity, and this is truly just normal ASP.NET controls. To add the designers, there were three pieces to the designer that needed in place. One was the control designer itself, which was created as a class inheriting from the control designer base, and then a variety of methods that we had to implement. Um, but then associated with that was the ASCX, which is the template, the HTML that gets applied to the control designer, and the JavaScript that con contains a lot of its client-side workings. That's been a very quick look at how to create custom Sitefinity widgets and then add 
and a user-friendly interface, a control designer to those custom widgets. And I hope this video has served as an effective introduction to that topic. And I hope you'll look at our other resources for guidance on adding additional functionality to your custom widgets. Thank you very much for watching this video.